Hello and welcome and thanks for joining us in the Continuing the Conversation studio. Continuing the Conversation, or CTC, is an arts and education network founded and organized by alumni from the arts and education program at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Our goal is to provide spaces for conversations that are important to advancing work in the arts and education sector and to get as many people as we can across sectors engaged in those conversations. You can join in today by commenting on our website, aieconversation.org, or by tweeting with the hashtag AIECTCChat. I'm Eliza Greenberg, a co-chair of CTC, and I'm thrilled to introduce our guests today. CTC is preparing for our next conference, Circle Up, which will happen May 6th through 8th at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. During the conference, participants will follow conversation threads that address different topics important to the field of arts and education. Our guest today is one of five thread leaders who will be leading the conversation in May. So today we welcome Jeff Hopkins, who will be leading our deepening practice thread, and we'll be discussing the questions how do we define, describe, and achieve high-quality teaching and learning? And how is our understanding of what it means changing? So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Steve Seidel to get us started. Thank you, Aliza. And it's nice to be uh, back with our studio chats. Uh, I want to um, uh, just to say that all of the studio chats that we're going to do this year uh, align with threads from the CTC conference that's upcoming, and we're uh, starting today with a, the thread that we've called Deepening Practice. Um, I'm thrilled to be in this conversation with Jeff Hopkins, who I only get to see every couple of years, uh, but who uh, I had the pleasure of working with many years ago here at the Graduate School of Education where uh, Jeff was a student and I'm the faculty director of the Arts and Education program. So Jeff, it's really great to see you. Um, you let too. me Good. <laughs> let me say a couple of things um, quickly to kind of frame uh, what we're going to talk about today. And there are lots of directions you can go with a, a thread title like Deepening Practice. We're particularly concerned with the two questions that Elisa put out. And they're questions about, uh, they, 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 these questions make an assumption that uh, a path toward deepening practice is to examine what we mean when we think about and talk about and are guided by our images of what constitutes high quality arts learning experiences. And so, um, and so here are the questions. Let me just read them again. Um, how do we define, describe, and achieve high-quality teaching and learning? And how is our understanding of what that means changing? Uh, so I hope to explore uh, with Jeff in this uh, session today some of his thinking about, um, about quality. I'm going to ask him uh, to share a little bit about how his ideas have changed over the nearly 20 years that he's been a teaching artist in New York City. And he's going to give us a little bit of um, background on uh, sort of a, maybe a, a, a super brief history of just uh, what it looks like to be a teaching artist for 15 to 20 years in New York City. Um, so Jeff, let me turn to you for that. And, and maybe you can um, just uh, go right in from sharing a little bit of, of uh, what your work is and what it looks like to whether your ideas about what constitutes quality, how you work on that, how you try to achieve it, have changed from the early days of your, your practice to the present. All right, sure. Um... So right now I am a teaching artist for five institutions in, in here in New York City, and that those are um, those have developed over time. I've worked for for various museums and have held on to projects and collaborations that have worked, and I've been able to kind of 
uh, shape this. Um, uh, so right now I work for the Guggenheim Museum and the Learning Through Art program there. Then I also work for the American Ballet Theater where I collaborate with our dancers and choreographers and I work with students to create set and costume designs in schools. Um, then I work for the Jewish Museum and Arts Connection and then um, I'm also a, um, a teach art education at City College to undergrads and grads. So my days are very, um, the, I do a lot of switching and, and, and taking one hat off and putting on another hat and so some days I find myself working with fourth graders in the morning and then moving to high school students in the afternoon and then teaching college at night. So I'm constantly thinking or, or trying to just assess what I'm doing is and if I'm do what I'm doing is a quality experience. And I think one of the things that I've really landed upon now, and this is probably in the last few years when I've when I've tried to um, to pick and choose the projects that really align with my values and, and the kinds of things I want to do and want to accomplish. So I think I, I've started to define quality as something that needs to be flexible and ever changing and that and quality and, and I feel like quality has to be I'm Jeff. I'm losing you, and so I want to your see if you hear me. Yeah, Jeff. I'm not sure if you hear me, but um, I want to just Jeff, can you hear us? I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, thank you. All right, is that any better? Uh, definitely better. It couldn't get worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me I just... Uh, Jeff, if you hear me, yeah. uh, take us back for a, a minute. I'm not sure uh, if you could tell when we stopped hearing you. So you were talking about uh, quality that you had come to see, uh, sort of focus on the quality of the experience that people were having. Mm -hmm. You were beginning to explain that uh, quality has to... Uh, quality changes over time. I mean, quality changes in different settings, and it has to align with your values and the values of the places where you're working, um, and that it has to be flexible and ever-changing. So maybe you could just pick up from there. Sure. Um, you know, when I think about, when I try to ask myself, is this a quality teaching and learning experience, I have to really try to understand what the, the goals are for that experience and I have to think about what were the goals that we discussed in be, in beginning in terms of starting this collaboration, what were the goals I had for myself, what do I think the students goals are for themselves, what do I think the teachers goals are and I try to really create my definition of quality based on all of those factors for that particular project. Uh, and then ultimately I try to ask myself, is this project that we're doing, and, and, and by project I mean anything from a discussion to an exploratory question to uh, experimentation with materials to a longer term project, I ask myself, is this project asking the students, meeting the students where they are and then asking them to take where they are and push it another step further. Like, am I, am I meeting them, understanding what their experiences are so far, and then asking them and challenging them to do something a little beyond their experiences, their comfort level, um, and their knowledge? 
And I think if I can if if I can answer yes to that, if I can say I've really challenged the students based upon what I know about them and what our goals are for them, and I've really asked them to, to either make something, think about something, do something, have a conversation about something that goes out of the range of their 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 experiences so far in the, in life, then I have created a quality experience for them. So, mm -hmm. Jeff, let me just jump in because that's uh, where you went with that was really interesting to me. So I felt like when you started to talk about um, the well, you you said uh, there are two big things that I think are really important: quality. Uh, that happens when there's a quality learning experience in the room, wherever you are, the ballet theater, design studio, uh, classroom, uh, museum space, uh, whatever the space is, um, quality, the process of achieving quality has started long before you ever walked in the door. And that seems really important and really powerful. Uh, and you know, it raises the question for me, if, if those early conversations were, in a sense, not high-quality conversations, then are you going to get to quality in the room? Mm. I think that's... Oh, do you want, to, want me to comment on that first? Sure. Uh, I think that's a really great point. I think it's hard to pull quality out of something that doesn't start with at least an intention of quality, and and that experience, you know, sort of developing quality starts in the beginning. It starts with uh, aligning the right people in your partnership, or um, or at least getting the people who are to become your partners on board, and making sure that you're all communicating and using the same language. And are uh, have some shared goals. My goals might be different in some ways than a classroom teacher with whom I'm partnering, or my goals might be different even than the choreographers with whom I'm working at American Ballet Theater. They have goals for for themselves and their students in terms of the dance portion, and then I've established my own goals in terms of what I want to create with the students on a visual level, but we have to make sure we're speaking the same language and that all our goals are going to meet somewhere. And if that's not happening in the beginning, it's really difficult to write the ship. And it's really difficult to um, to kind of pull out a deep thinking and learning experience if you don't establish that ground in the beginning of what kind of questions do I want to ask? How am I going to get to understand the students? How am I going to... Um, what what materials or processes am I going to use to get there and 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 doing that that work ahead of time will will make that the, that other work almost come much come much more naturally yeah so Jeff let me just ask you uh, have you you know somebody gives you a call and says we'd like to do a project and could you come in and talk about it do you ever um, decide in the first conversation that uh, this is not going to work. We're not going to get to a really powerful, high-quality experience for young people because we're not having the right conversation right now. Um, I any... think yes. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Uh, it happens often, you know, and it happens often in terms of uh, a museum might be developing a partnership with a public school, and the principal is extremely enthusiastic about the partnership. And has asked classroom teachers to to work with us and develop a, a project idea. And I may meet with the teachers, and they may be either skeptical or overworked, or or not just not really enthusiastic about this thing because the principal kind of asked them to do it. And my so I understand right away that we have a little bit of paving the road to do before we can actually get to that talk about goals and quality and what we want to achieve. So I never I never possible and I and I very rarely bail on a situation 
but what I do is understand the challenge right up front and try to use the tools that I have developed over my years as a teaching artist the primary tool being flexibility and understanding and trying to understand where my partners are coming from because I feel like if somebody is putting up some some barriers and we're not really connecting on our goals then it's on me to figure out what their goals are and to have a conversation about it and then to try to align the things that I think we could be and should be achieving with their goals and that sometimes takes more upfront work and sometimes it carries on through the project or through the partnership or through the residency and it might take a few sessions of us working together, it might take a few sessions of seeing me in action with the students and understand um, that I'm not there to waste time, that I'm there to make something of quality and I think if I can do, you know, if I if I need to have those conversations or understand that there's some some barriers up front, I put in the work to try to to break down those barriers, and then we can get those things. Is does it happen 100% of the time? No, and I have a real good judgment in terms of what is. This I'm losing you, Jeff, again. And sometimes it falls short. Oh, Jeff, I'm sorry. We lost you again. Okay. Come back to me then. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Um, it's just... Technology in the 21st century. Yeah, exactly. We only have about 100 years to wait till we work this out. Um, <laughs> Jeff, no, we uh, just paid. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, I think so. Okay. Let me let me jump in and pick up, and we'll see how we do with the with the quality the quality of the connection here. Um, okay because I'm noticing where we are on time, there was a question that I wanted to ask you, uh, which, you know, different, the kinds of settings that you were describing uh, could be, you know, are quite, could be quite different, really. Uh, there isn't a uniform set of educational goals and values out there in New York City or anywhere else. And, um, I remember when I was uh, working in the Boston Public Schools in the 80s, and I would work in one school in the morning and another school in the afternoon, and with different teachers. And um, you know what was considered great in one setting was like we don't do that here in the other setting. So um, I'm I'm wondering if how much your sense of of how much quality and what it means changes from one setting to another and whether you can give us an example of uh, you know what it can what it can mean in the morning and what it can mean in the afternoon somewhere else sure um, I I think there's one there's there's a common thread that I do find carries through no matter what setting I'm in or what uh, age level I might be working with or what institution I might be representing in terms of partnership and that is I always try to make sure that we're asking really um, provocative and thoughtful and engaging questions and then I'm also trying to make sure that the materials and the processes we use are the best materials and processes to explore and answer those questions and I think when those two things align when your questions and your processes and your materials are uh, come together then you really do have a quality experience so then that can happen in different forms for me throughout the day so if I'm working with um, fourth graders in a public school in the morning and we may be exploring a, sort of a big scale essential question something like um, what, what, what is home 
how do how does where we live affect how we live, and we might be through personal um, reflection. We might be looking at different cultures, uh, but my my definition of quality for those students is to to ask myself, you know, have I challenged the students to think beyond the questions they already know the answers to? Have I given them materials and the proper place to experiment and explore answer to those to the answers to those questions through paint, through sculpture, through drawing, through sketching, through looking at how other artists have explored that question in, in history. Uh, and that Come, that that project may look like um, it, it it takes it happens on the level that of for fourth graders, but I sir, but I wouldn't um, you know. So then I might move on, and then uh, you know, in the afternoon I might be working with uh, an arts focused high school, where the high school itself their mission is to to be to prepare the students for a career in the arts. And their expectations of quality might be uh, that the students have a professional experience working with a professional artist, uh, exploring real life assignments or deadlines. And so I will redefine my definition of quality so that I am focused more on challenging the students to think in the way a professional designer might think or a professional um, artist might think and I might hold them to standards of technical quality in a certain way because um, the, there are some expectations of, of technical skill level um, but for me you know when I'm working with younger students it's not about like does this project look great is this a product that is quality it's about is this an experience that's a quality experience? And if the materials are really supporting exploration of these questions, the product will happen. And the students will make beautiful, thoughtful, provocative, um, deep work because you've provided them the forum and the format for questioning, and you've provided them the materials for, as an outlet for the answers. And when those two things come together, then you've got something really beautiful, something really quality. So um, I hear you. I hear in these descriptions of these two kinds of settings, it's super helpful to have it played out in that way. Um, what I hear in the description of those two settings is um, that that you are being flexible as you move between them. Um, but I also hear that there are some foundational ideas about how people learn that are carrying whether you're working with the fourth grade or the or the twelfth grade mm. and in very different kinds of environments mm. um, and and you're you seem very very clear that your essentially your theory of learning or, or parts of your theories of learning I'm sure you have many other parts to them but that there are some pieces that um, you don't want to compromise on. You want big questions. You don't want small stuff. You mm -hmm. want high quality materials so that people can have a real artistic engagement with what it means to really work with good materials um, on big on big issues mm -hmm. and to have some uh, some time the adequate time and space to really explore. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's, it's interesting to sort out what's flexi flexibility from uh, not having a spine. Mm. And I think as an educator, you're describing you know, some of the, the really the pieces that are your spine, that hold you up, that you carry with you into every situation you're in. You know, that's a really good point. I think uh, I probably, those things are so rooted in what I do, the, the idea of, of making sure that you are, that questions are at the root of everything, that materials exploration, good quality materials, um, 
that, that those things are so inherent to what I do, and I, I that I probably almost take for granted that that's th that that's the 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 um that provides the structure to everything that I do, and I think when you are, I think the my flexibility comes from being really strong in understanding that um, I can be flexible around how we want to connect our voices together. I can be flexible around how we want to scaffold the experience. I can be flexible around how we want to um, make it a collaboration and who's going to do what and who's going to do what when. I've I've lost you again, Jeff. Sorry. Flexible in of us. I'd be really flexible in terms of with How's this? I'll keep talking uh, and then well, is that good? I think you I think it's better. But I did lose a little bit. You were yeah. naming different ways in which you're flexible. Yeah, so the flexible, um, and then flexible just in terms of uh, understanding the students and where they're coming from. But I cannot be flexible and give up um, the opportunity and the need to ask the students questions, to have a dialogue, to get to know the students and understand where they're coming from, and then give the students time to answer those questions through whatever we decide to, whatever we create together. And, you know, I think by standing strong on those, I can be flexible with everything else. And I can also, instead of really going wide and trying to do so many things, I can go deeper into that experience. And I can have one question open up to another question, open up to another question, until we've gotten to something where the students are making a work of art that really and truly reflects quality as defined by our goals and defined by their goals and defined by um, you know the, the, the whole experience and not just the product that they make. Beautiful. Well maybe that's the um, uh, the, the rounding out statement for the moment. I think we could go uh, way further on this, and you provoked a uh, wonderful thought for me today about the place of um, one's theories of learning in one's uh, notion of, of what constitutes quality. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So that's, that's uh, fabulous and uh, makes me very excited about the conference in, uh, in May. Uh, so, Elisa, remind us, it's May 6, 7, and 8. Uh, tell us, tell us what to, uh, how people can learn more about that. But, Jeff, um, it's really great to be back in conversation with you and to hear how your thinking is developing. It's fantastic. It, it is. It's always a pleasure. Um, I'm looking forward to May. It should be a, a, really, a really great weekend, a great conversation. Thank you. Me too. Yes, and if you join us in May, we can't promise no technical difficulties, but we'll be in person, so the technical difficulties will be much fewer. So I hope you'll join us in May, May 6th, 7th, and 8th at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. In addition to Jeff, there's uh, four other, actually five other thread leaders. One of our threads is co-led. Um, registration is now open. You can uh, find more information on our website at aieconversation.org. And our next studio chat will be in February with Christine Greer Paglia from PS Arts in Los Angeles. And we're really looking forward to that conversation as well. So, hope to see you soon.